What do you think went wrong in that second quarter? I think it was 45-20. Yeah, our turnovers killed us. You know, we had really good control of the game in the uh, in the first quarter, held them to 17. Our defense was great. And then uh, we just started um, turning it over. I thought um, Alvarado came in, put a lot of pressure on the ball, and, and uh, we couldn't execute offensively. And I think we, they scored 15 points off our turnovers in that quarter alone. So uh, that's where the game flipped for sure. They were 20 of 38 from three point. Uh, did you think you just have breakdowns there? What, what, what was going on with their oh, tough shots that they were making? Tough How shots. Did, yeah. uh, I thought our half court defense was great tonight. And I thought um, our guys were flying out at shooters. Um, give them credit. They made some really tough shots. I mean, Trey Murphy made a couple of 30 footers with a hand in his face, high arcing shots. This is the modern NBA, you know. Um, we made 26 threes in LA the other day. Um, they made 20 tonight. If, if a team gets hot from three, it's, it's really hard uh, to win the game. So, you know, they made seven more threes than us. Um, but it was the, the, uh, the turnovers that led to transition that got them going. And that's, you could see that's where they started to pick up their confidence. I know you don't know all the permutations, but could you be resting some guys on Sunday? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> does, does it matter 9 10 at this point? Well, how much does that matter? I mean, you, you prefer to stay at home, but if you look at what we're facing, uh, it's a gauntlet, right? And you got to play two, two play in games. And if you, if you can win those two, then you got to, you know, game one 48 hours after that. So I'm much more interested in uh, our. Uh, ability to, to be ready for, for next week. Um, but we've got to wait and see how everything shakes out. Steve, when Draymond is guarding Zion, when he gives you 12 rebounds and 11 assists, do you is the trade-off no shot attempts for Draymond? Do you live with that? The trade-off yeah. of? Uh, Draymond didn't attempt a shot tonight as he was doing other things on the floor. But you were talking about the Lakers game too, where you know when Draymond has a shooter, he gives you guys an extra boost as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't care if Draymond shoots or doesn't shoot. Um, he does everything else. He was incredible tonight. Um, his defense was so good. His competitiveness. I, I thought our our guys in the second half, the way they fought. Um, it was amazing to watch just the, the this competitive spirit and the energy. Um, these guys, you know, they've been doing it for 12, 15 years, winning championships, uh, playing deep into June. Um, here we are, you know, fighting for the play in. These guys are Hall of Famers, and you see the effort. Uh, that they gave the 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 fight to get back in the game to give ourselves a chance. It's beautiful, you know. It's it wasn't the result we wanted, but they they showed you who they are, and it's they're going to do that until they retire. That's that's what makes them so special. That's why our fans love these guys so much. It's not just the skill; it's the it's just the incredible will to win. And um, that team, New Orleans. They they played an amazing game, and they they had to to win the game because of the way our guys fought. So disappointing result, but um, could not be more proud of our our group. You mentioned resting players and stuff. Did finish with 33 and hit some incredible shots down the stretch to kind of keep you guys in this and give him, give them a chance. But again, kind of just on the fatigue level for Steph, and you know whether it's just shooting splits or how much are you seeing that right now and how important is it just to get him as fresh as possible for yeah him? yeah so you know we'll 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 assess uh you know where um, where everybody is tomorrow uh and the next day and decide whether to, to you know who to play and all that um sunday but um it, you know the back-to-back -back last night, and you know, last night was a tough game. I think Steph played 36 minutes, so it's a lot at at 36 years old. And um, and every game we've played has been a playoff game the last couple of weeks. So, um, that, and that's what I'm talking about. Just watching, you know, Steph um, and and all of the guys fight down the stretch to give ourselves a chance on a night when you know Steph was obviously you know struggling with the turnovers for him to flip the game like that was more about his his will than anything Steve with back-to-back -back games uh, what do you look for in the rhythm of a game to determine what you do what moves you make particularly in the second half 
Uh, every game is different. We look for matchups. We look at how we can attack uh, a defense. We look at what's our best defensive lineup. Um, so whether it's back to back or we're playing on rest, it doesn't really make any difference. It's um, we're, we're just searching for how we're going to win the game. You mentioned Pajemski's plus minus throughout the season. Obviously, been great. Minus twenty three uh, tonight. Was that part of the, the pressure? Was a problem? Maybe their guards. Uh, what do you think happened with him? No, I, I you know, I mean, it, I look at plus minus as a uh, more of a cumulative um, stat over the course of the year. If, if somebody is consistently on the plus side, that means something. But you know, one game, I think BP was out there in the second quarter when they went on that huge run and. Um, I didn't think he played poorly at all. I just think, um, you know, the, the game didn't go his way tonight. Thank you. Trace, they, they hit 23s, you know, went, shot over 50%. What do you think happened that led to that? Um, I think that second quarter is really what – um, started that flurry. Um, guys like CJ, McCollum, Trey Murphy, uh, they got comfortable. And then when teams start hitting threes, um, it's contagious. And so um, afterwards, when we went into the locker room, said we got to take that away. I feel like for the most part we did, but it's hard to come back when teams are shooting the lights out. Can't let them get comfortable. Trace, they did shoot lights out, but you guys had different points in the game where you guys caught momentum and caught a swing there. But it seemed like defensively in those swings, you guys played well. But offensively, you just kind of couldn't get it going. What do you think mm -hmm. kind of stopped that tonight? And we saw less of a connection tonight between you and the, the lob threat. What do you think kind of caused that? Yeah, I think that um, obviously turning the ball over was, was huge. Um, but 114 points uh, giving up, and that can win you a lot of games. So our defense was definitely there. Um, but... At the end of the day, we just got to continue to play through each other, swing the ball, uh, make the right plays. So, Does this game, I mean, as you mentioned, they got so hot from three. Does this game and the way you guys won Tuesday in L.A. sort of show you how dangerous the playing can be? I mean, the team gets hot, whether it's you or the other team, and it can be done pretty quickly. Absolutely. Um, coach talks about it all the time. It's a new NBA. Teams are shooting 30 to 40 threes a night. And so you got to really guard the three-point line. And um, they had it going tonight. Draymond had a double-double without attempting a shot. What do you think about the work he did in this game, especially guarding Zion? Um, he did a great job. I mean, 11 for 26, obviously at 26 points, but on 26 shots, um, he did his job. Um, but the way that he was moving the ball, um, engaged defensively, getting tip outs, um, setting screens, he's a huge part of our team. I know we've talked a lot about the standings the past couple of weeks, but it's looking more and more likely that you'll be in that 9-10 game. Mm -hmm. Just, just how daunting is that path, you know, maybe going on the road, going on the road again to even get to a playoff series? I mean, we've been, we've been living on the road this last month, so it isn't anything new. Um, obviously, it's a bigger stage. Um, both teams are going to be fired up, but we just got to continue to do what we do. Steve said um, you guys played the fight was beautiful was his quote incredible will to win what do you think about hearing those positive words but not having the w to go with it um yeah it's just we're at the end of the season um there could there was a lot of time in that game where we could have folded um and called it um, but we didn't we we fought to the very end and that's what we're going to need to do um, for the rest of the season if we want to have a chance to make something special happen <laughs> Clay, when you guys were making that uh, ferocious comeback in the fourth quarter, what was going on through your mind and what were you thinking about and just what was the attitude at that point? Um, I was thinking uh, all we need is a shot and we gave ourselves a chance. Unfortunately, it did not go our way. I mean, give the Pelicans credit. They made some really difficult shots out there. What what went wrong in the second quarter? That seemed to kind of be where the game flipped. What went wrong? 
Uh, I would say uh, I think our turnovers and our uh, lack of movement on offense probably hurt our defense a little bit. And uh, they made a big run. And uh, that was probably the thing that hurt us the most. You you would have moved into eight with a with a win tonight. Um, mm -hmm. How how much does that aspect of this sting? It stings a lot. Kerr mentioned that definitely going to be some guys resting on Sunday. He didn't say who. Uh, could you use a rest? Do you think this team could use a little bit of rest before the play-in? Because we know what that's going to be like. It's it's going to be it's pretty much. The, it's not the worst thing in the world, considering we played a hectic schedule this last month with a ton of travel, so it wouldn't be the worst thing. Clay, you said it stings a lot, which is understandable, but you were just in the locker room with the guys. How are you kind of feeling, right? Are you guys all together feeling, knowing that you're in the position that you're in? It's not terrible, but it's not the best. Well, all we can ask for is a chance, and we got that, and I personally feel great playing a game team high at 38 minutes, so I feel wonderful. It looked like the cameras at one point caught you and CJ McCollum, John, a little bit. What was that moment like, and I guess what was that matchup like for you? Um, what was it like? Uh, it was like two NBA players talking, um, probably not the best words were used, but that's just what it was like, you know, just good old basketball banter. Nice. Night, and they were the ones that are not all turnovers are created equal. They're the ones that fuel, you know, transition, the live ball ones that they took full advantage of pretty much every single one. And like that, that little stretch in the second quarter just gave them life. And in this league, it's really a momentum league where. They hit a couple of transition threes, they get a couple of layups, they start to feel good about themselves and it carried over. We gave ourselves a, a good chance in the fourth, you know, under 15 seconds down three. I got a, a look that felt like I had a chance to tie the game and take a chance, but we don't ever quit. So it was just one of those games that uh, you look at that second quarter stretch and that's where, where it got away from us. And, you know, some, some untimely turnovers. Does the fact that the, the Kings lost and eight was there for you guys tonight um, make it sting worse? I could care less about that. It's more about uh, in looking at ourselves and, you know, letting a game like tonight slip. Because at the end of the day, it really would be nice to get there. You want two cracks at it. Is that also the most? Um, oh, Hold on. I just. Like that's the that would have been the goal, but uh, at the end of the day, you want to just have the best vibes going into a playoff, you know, or a play-in scenario. Um, so we'll have to bounce back from uh, from this this letdown. Steve seemed to indicate rest might be a priority Sunday. Uh, do you feel like that's important for yourself to get some rest over? I guess trying to play well Sunday. I don't know. I know the Kings lost, like you said. I don't know the circumstances. You still get eight, technically. Um, we'll make that decision tomorrow or Sunday whenever we because. talk about it. Uh, Steph, how frustrating is it, though, when you guys, yeah, as well as you guys play, any loss can kind of derail all the progress you guys have made? I mean, this whole last whatever thirty games has just been giving our uh, oper operation give ourselves you know a chance and we've done that thanks to our robot performances and you know we are twenty and twenty at home which is still weird but um, this whole season's been weird so just we know it's going to come down to a playing type you know experience and whoever we play wherever we play we have a shot. So let's just focus on that. I know you don't love this topic, but you have had some turnovers. The last few games hasn't. Uh, you scored 33 tonight, but some sh maybe not every shot's looked great. Have you any sense of fatigue at this point? And any feeling like, hey, I could take a breath here. It might be better. No. Um, everything's under a major spotlight microscope as it should because, you know, we're 
there's definitely been a sense of urgency on our on every game because it impacts the outcome of our season and like seeding and all that. And when I look at this game, I look at the second quarter. I think I had four of them, fresh legs or not, they're just bad decisions. And you, know, you try to be aggressive, try to make the right play. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but you gotta live with it. Steph, I know you go with the uh, your you are what your record says. Does that feel at all different this year? Does it feel like with the amount of games that you probably should have won, uh, that's been kind of left on the bone? Does it feel like you should be here? That this is a team that is a 10 C team or a 19 team or eight? You can look at it a lot of different ways. Like, uh, what's our record in like the last 30 ish? Some it's been. If so you extrapolate that out to an 82 percentages, uh, then you're probably not in this situation. But all the things that we've gone through this year um, and the way that the West is stacked, it's just that's our situation. So um, it doesn't really matter what we feel we are. We just want to get into a playoff series. And uh, however we get there and however we can get it done, there's a lot of confidence that we can beat anybody on any given night, and we have to hold on to that because, <clears throat> you know, one game Sunday and then to do or die. Hey, Steph, uh, not a good times tonight, but uh, today is the uh, debut of your new animation, Good Times. Just wanted to get uh, your thoughts on it, and uh, you're going to be uh, watching it with the family. Uh, were you a good times uh, watch, you know, did you watch it back in the day and, and your thoughts on this animation series? Uh, yeah, it's the, obviously the IP of Good Times, everybody knows what that is and there's such a, uh, it's on a pedestal of shows that represent black culture, black social commentary, um, black family. This is a different take on that, so the name will ring, but an animated series that's uh, kind of driven towards the adult audience. It's a little different, so uh, you take that for what it is, and I will not be with my kids, no, <laughs> uh, watching it, but uh, I think it has a little something for everybody, so, well, for the right audience, for sure. Two quick questions. It looked like you might have tweaked your ankle a little bit in the fourth. Did, did something feel odd or no? I rolled it just slightly, but... Uh, on the scale of all the ankle injuries I've had, this is definitely on the milder side, so I should be all right. And you've said a couple times, just have a chance, give yourself a chance. Um, how much of a difference is it to come out of the 9-10 road than if you were able to climb up to eight? I mean, it, Steve and you guys have been talking, I and mean, that's obviously been the goal for a week or two now. If you're in the 9-10 game, does that seem at all daunting, or how do you sort of view that path? I, th I mean, it's in, uh, it's built into the way that it's structured that a 7-8 is a much better position because you have two games guaranteed. Uh, to get one, 9-10, it's single elimination. Um, but the and we've been through it with the, it was at the 21 season, and you understand it feels like a game seven kind of ex you know experience where every possession is heightened just because if you lose, you know what, what the – Circumstances are so we just get two of them if that's where we are. Um, but at the end of the day, it's you have to, you know, play your best game that particular night. And, um, you know, we're confident we can get out of that. And if we do, we're confident that we can, you know, scare whoever it is in the, in the one or two spot, whoever we play. I was going to ask you about that uh, playing three years ago. Um, can you take what you felt there? I know you went 0 and 2 on that, but um, and say, yeah, we know how to do this. Or you've got obviously you got some younger players, or do you say it's just like a playoff? You just you just consider it a playoff game. No, you consider it that, but I think we're a better, much better team than that team was. Um, I think a lot more going for us. We were scratching and clawing that year and. Went on a whatever 15 and five run just to get a, a, a chance, but I think this team's much more capable of handling that type of scenario. But I can say it all I want to. We got to go out and do it.
Tá, tá. Não, eu vendo.